Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey tea sippers, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanted to come on here and do a reaction to a few stories. So if you guys do not know, this story is very disturbing. It's coming from Kenya. Um, it's about a Ugandan runner. Her name is Rebecca Chiptayi. Sorry if I mispronounced her name. The other day she was admitted into the hospital with over 70% of her body suffering from third degree burns. And what we're hearing is that her boyfriend set her on fire in front of her children. And this was all behind a land dispute. Dispute. So this entire situation is just extremely disturbing. So we're going to go ahead and watch this news clip together and then I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, give my commentary on the situation. An Olympic athlete has died in Kenya four days after her boyfriend allegedly doused her in petrol and set her on fire. 33-year-old Rebecca Sheptege competed for Uganda at the Paris Olympics, finishing 44th in the marathon. Her partner is being treated for burns in hospital. Police are investigating the attack. Let's bring in Usha Kumagisha, who's a Ugandan sports commentator and former athlete. She joins us from Kigali in Rwanda. Welcome to Al Jazeera. So this is a horrendous waste of a life and, of course, of talent to compete at the highest level. And now this. What kind of an athlete was she? Rebecca Chaptege, like many Ugandan athletes or long distance runners from uh, the East African region, very humble, just focused on uh, representing her nation, but also enjoying um, athletics. She recently competed in uh, the Paris 2024 Olympics, um, finished 44th, but just generally, you know, a wife, a mother, um, great mother to her children. Um, and just to understand the circumstances in which this has happened is just very sad. You know, Sunday morning, coming from church, from praying, and then all of a sudden, Petra attack on her by her partner. This this is just sad and, and very tragic in every kind of way. Uh, and Asha, what does her death mean, of course, for Uganda, Ugandan sport, and also the wider sporting community? It's very scary at this point because uh, on December 31st, uh, 2023, a Ugandan athlete, Benjamin Kiplagat, was found dead and he was stabbed and uh, in Eldoret in uh, the Rift Valley region where most of uh, the high altitude um, uh, athletes use these areas to train. It's very sad, but also in the last four and three years you have uh, several incidents happening for female athletes agnes tirop in uh, 2021 died in the same circumstances attacked by her partner in 2022 you also have uh, the mirrors uh, mutua mudi who was uh, also strangled by her partner they found a pillow over her head so this is just getting out of hand gender-based violence and it gives a lot of um, you know information around maybe their partners who allegedly are jealous with uh, their achievements as uh, athletes, especially in the world with all the spotlight on them when they succeed. Yeah, I was just about to ask you that. I mean, so I want to pause it real quick to say that one of my tea sippers have wrote that comment on my Instagram page. And they were basically saying the same thing, that this has been happening a lot, um, especially in the sports world. So I'm gonna show you guys what she wrote on my page. So as you guys see here, she says, them side in Kenya, specifically against female athletes here, keep rising and, and it's scary AF. The late Damaris Muta and Agnes Tarope also died at the hands of their spouses. These men are weak and prey on successful women. So as you see, this is becoming a trend and it's starting to become an uptick. So we're going to go ahead and keep listening to what the news has to say. It does sort of suggest that there is a degree of, of bitterness around fame, around potential financial earnings, um, being at the top of their game in these particular sports. I mean, how do you read this? It's just very tragic because uh, these are women who are doing everything 
possible within their means. They enjoy running, first of all, but that they succeed and represent their countries is just an extra layer that gives them prestige, but also is a way of life. They, they earn from it when they compete in these uh, competitions. They get paid for it. They come back home, build houses, buy some property. And it's not a problem if they put the property in both their names and those of their partners. So to have this kind of aggression and going on to uh, being killed just for um, standing up for themselves is just very sad because once you look at them as individuals, they're very humble women and even the humility aside, they're just women who are trying to, you know, uh, enjoy this career that they've set up for themselves. And yes, of course, they get support from family and friends, but uh, in the general grand scheme of things, it's just very sad that it has come down to this. And they're very young, you know, she was 33, Rebecca Cheptegei, uh, Agnes Tirop was buried on what could have been her 26th birthday. So when you look at it, I think more has to be done from the authorities and really from men um, in these particular circumstances. They have to protect uh, these women. And if they have a disagreement, they can agree to part ways. But death is not a solution. All right. So you guys just heard that the entire situation is really disturbing because, again, we talk here in America about black female femicide definitely being on the rise. You have a lot of bitter, sassy men, and it seems like more and more you have a lot of guys who are jealous of their girlfriends, their wives, women who are successful. It does something to the fragile male ego. And this is really disturbing because now we're seeing this more and more in Africa. I mean, we've always had women being abused and you know, men putting hands on women, domestic violence situations. That's nothing new in Africa, nor is it anything new in America. But now, you know, the fem side rate is definitely on an uptake. And this is really scary. And this is why I say to all the young girls out there, grown women, you have to get out of these situations um, because jealousy ends up building resentment. It ends up building animosity. And a lot of these dudes are weak. They cannot handle a successful woman. And they try to go out their way to tear you down bit by bit. They try to tear at your self-esteem, make you feel bad. But all all they're really doing is projecting their nonsense onto you so you have to be able to read through that and see it for what it is and see the writing on the wall and get the fuck up out of dodge before something ends up happening to you because this situation is sad and the fact that again like i said this is on the uptick with a lot of these athletes so these women are not only just being praised in their villages and towns they're being praised internationally and a lot of these guys that they're dating because unfortunately for women it's hard for a lot of women to date up you know what i'm saying there's not enough guys up there to date up to so a lot of times they're not dating other runners or men who are bringing in the same level of money and income a lot of women find themselves in a situation where they're having to date down unfortunately especially with a lot of black women and so this breeds jealousy and animosity that's why I do not disagree when a lot of these you know feminine you know YouTube channels tell women to date up you know date people on your level because jealousy is real and it's scary especially when it has to do with a man who's not being a man who's not providing who's not doing what he needs to do as a man you have to watch out for that and if you are a woman who's on your shit, you have your degree, you have a good job, you're maintaining, sometimes it's better to just be single and be alone rather than deal with some men and their fragile egos. Now I'm really understanding why more and more women are either turning gay, you know what I'm saying, dating other women, or, you know, divesting. I used to think divesters were just weird, you know what I mean? But now I'm really understanding why a lot of women are divesting, uh, they're dating other races, they don't want to be bothered at this point in time they'd rather be single date outside their race or just go gay because at this point it's getting scary and like i said it's happening more and more all over the country i don't know what is going on with a lot of these men and their egos and how they feel about a situation but ladies once again if you are in a domestic violence situation if you are in a situation where a man is constantly tearing you down picking apart your physical appearance trying to bring you down quote unquote a notch you better pay attention to the red flags and get the fuck up out of Dodge because it is not worth it. Nobody should be dying because they decided to invest in themselves because they want more out of life because they've been blessed or they lucked up or you know what I'm saying, they're, they're starting to see the fruits of their labor. 
This is a woman who worked hard her whole life, made it into the Olympics, and instead of this man supporting her, you end up, you know, dousing her and burning her alive. You know how painful that death is to burn somebody alive over a land dispute? It just shows, you know, he felt a way because she was able to buy and afford her own land. Whereas if he was really a man, why wasn't he able to buy his own land? You know what I'm saying? So he's basically trying to live off of her and her fame and her money and eventually his ego was just, you know, destroyed in the process. So the whole thing is just really scary and unfortunate. But if you find yourselves in this situation, get out because it does not get better. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Prayers to Rebecca and her family. Hopefully everything will work itself out and he will be arrested and fully charged. And I know her family is fighting to keep her land for her children. Hopefully the courts will side with the family and not with the ex's family because sometimes things are a little bit different in Africa versus the U.S. So hopefully that land stays in her family's name and can eventually be passed down to the children because that is why she worked so hard. So let me know your thoughts down below. Feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to share this video. I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Be safe, enjoy your day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.